So last night on the farm, I did a covert operation. I waited until dusk when my weird chickens got very sleepy and I started to steal them. I took them two by two, grabbing them and moving them from the home that they've had for the last six months over the course of the winter and put them into a new place. I had to move them out of the brooder that they were living in because I had little goslings that had just hatched and they needed to move into the shed where the weird chickens were living. And so because of the needs of the goslings, my weird chickens needed a new home. I scoured the internet far and wide for different options for chicken coops. I wanted something that was easy to move around because I wanted to bring them around to different parts of the farm. I wanted something that was easy to clean. I needed a coop that was gonna be secure and protect against potential predators like weasels and raccoons. And I wanted something weird to match the weird aesthetic of my weird chickens. And after looking high and low, I think I found just the right thing. Good night, you guys. I really hope my weird chickens like their new weird house. Hey, Molly Murder Mittens. How's it going? Good morning, large white farm dogs. How are you guys doing, huh? Good girl. Yes, that's what we like to see. Toby, you marking your territory? All right, both dogs inside. Yeah, it's a very rainy, mucky morning here today. Just because you got the rain and just because you got the muck doesn't mean you don't have the farm chores. And I also can't deny that I have the most adorable farm chore to handle this morning. Who's making all that racket? Oh, hey guys, how's it going? Good to see you, little ones. Did you have a good night last night? Yeah, so they're living underneath their little brooders that's where they like to sleep but they are coming out to say hello because they're excited to see us abby you're continuing to do a very good job of just observing these guys do not try to interact if you try to interact i will grab you back don't try to snap at them or take a chomp good girl abby good girl that's what we like to see we like to see a lady abington sitting yeah so they can jump up to the platform and get their water they got all their feed here hey abby no you're being a very good protector, Lady Abington. I'm proud of you. Yes, good job. And these guys are like, hey, what's she doing? She's very big and fluffy. Is she our mother? Now, one thing I'm doing a little bit different this year than in years past is you're going to notice these lights that I have up here. I basically have them set up on a little bit of a timer. And so when it's daytime, the lights will go on. And then around 8 o'clock at night, the lights will go off. I've noticed in the past when I brood birds in this shed, that sometimes they seem a little bit skittish when they first get access to the outdoors on day one. And so what I'm wondering is if they have more access to natural light, will that make them a little bit more friendly and sociable and less freaked out when they do go outside for the first time? It is perfectly natural to brood your birds indoors. And I actually put them outside probably earlier than a lot of other folks do, but they do still have that first week where it's just not good for them to be outside. And I mean, just for like comparison too right now, right? It's about 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside and it's rainy. That is not good weather for baby birds like this. They would die very quickly. Oh, look at Toby. He's so adorable with them. Yeah, see with Abby, I'm always a little bit nervous and cautious. With Toby, I just have complete trust that he knows how to watch over these little ones. Yeah, those are your, those are your birds? Yeah, okay. That's cool, man. Your birds are all over my phone. I think they just pooped on my phone. <laughs> but yeah, they're they are doing good, including I think this one right here, this little gal or guy. So you guys remember in the last video when I was hatching out some of those eggs, she was one of those little birds that wasn't hatching by herself, but you can see she's made it and she's now happy and healthy and looks pretty much like her brothers and sisters. Class number one of goslings is doing good. In about, I don't know, I think about another week or so, eight days actually to be exact, we're gonna have another batch of goslings that are gonna come as well. What I'm debating right now is, do I put them in here with these guys even though they'll be a week old or not? It's still something I'm trying to figure out. You can see they're getting cold. Like, look at that one, she's shivering. They're gonna need to go back under their brooder plate pretty soon. 
So I'm gonna close the door and let them stay warmer in here. I'll see you guys in a little bit. There is nothing more adorable on planet Earth than fresh gosling. Yeah, don't you agree? Yeah, I know you do, pal. Did you do an abs? Gnawing on your beef bone? And he's like, please don't interrupt my gnawing. This is my happy place. And it's funny, Toby's not a big chewing on things fan. Abby, she just can't get enough of it. And actually, I think it helps her be a little bit more chill and calm if she has something to chew on on the regular. All right, Toby, let's go check on your other birds. Good morning, birds. How's everybody doing? On this rainy, dreary day. You know, it's actually funny. On rainy, dreary days like today, you'll notice that pretty much all of our chickens are inside the hoop coop. But the ducks, most of them are actually outside. Staying dry there, girl? Toby dog's marking that nest is his. Let's see what do we got here? We're still getting goose eggs. That's a good sign. So this lady and then this lady continue to sit on their nest. I don't know. I'm wondering if something's starting to happen underneath her. From a timing perspective, something should be hatching very soon. I'm not going to freak you out. I'm just going to let you keep doing your thing. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, other gander. Excuse me. Jeremy, knock it off. Hey, Greta. How's it going? You can see our seasonal stream has finally dried up. And so very soon, I will probably start the process of moving the chicken coop out as well as moving the birds actually entirely out of this area. Probably in the next week or two, they're going to all go up into the permaculture orchard. I'll probably keep a couple of the mothers that are sitting on nests in place, but the rest of them are gonna all go. Speaking of mothers are sitting on nests, I don't know what happened to my duck that has been sitting on this nest. She's been a really good mom so far though, so I'm gonna continue to let her do her thing. Fresh as this egg. Ooh, nope, this one's going to the pigs. And now let's check in with our farm's oldest bird, Jemima Puddle Duck. Hello, Mother Puddle Duck, how are you doing? You good? Looks like you're about ready to lay an egg. You know, even though I think she's, gosh, maybe six, almost seven years old, she still lays eggs occasionally. Not as much as she used to, but she'll still lay an egg. You know, Jemima Puddle Duck actually features pretty prominently in the new Toby Dog book that's going to be published this fall. And the illustrator actually just finalized some of the illustrations for the different chapters. Like each chapter has a separate illustration that goes with it, even though it's, you know, like mostly a prose book. And the one she did of Toby Dog chatting with Mother Puddle Duck there is absolutely adorable. And yeah, I can't wait for that book. And if you guys want to check it out, I'll leave a link down below for our mailing list when you're going to get all the news, including when exactly the pre-order date opens up and uh, the different formats you can get, as well as just updates on what I'm going to be doing to produce it. Because there's going to be a print version, there's going to be like a Kindle version, and then there's going to be like an audiobook version. I'm super excited about all of them. I am optimistic that if this new weird chicken house works, come the fall when I'm moving the birds back into the hoop coop, I will probably end up bringing that over over here and stashing it much like I do the big chicken coop somewhere in here as well. And that way the weird chickens would get access to just more space. I think the one downside is your weird chicken moments of zen might not be as zenful. Or the other thing I'm thinking is maybe I just like put some fencing up and segment off a portion of this so that the weird chickens can just have their own space because I always worry about the much bigger chickens bullying them because that's a very likely scenario. And that's how they could get hurt. Isn't that right, Mr. Toby Dog? Three more runner duck eggs all in a row. And one more goose egg. Sounds like the rain's starting to come down pretty hard again. All right, time to feed the birds. Pigs are like, why aren't you feeding the pigs? And Toby's just like, they are the strangest beasts. Never in my wildest imagination did I ever dream I would have sons like this. For those of you guys wondering where our weird chickens lived last year before they moved into the brooder, it was actually in this house here. It had this enclosed run so they could stay protected as well as their little babies could stay protected. The coop itself was a good size and it's good construction. I actually think I'm gonna probably sell this to somebody. The downside that I found with it was it was just harder to clean out. Which was one negative, but that's actually not the reason I really didn't wanna use it this year. The bigger reason is because it's just impossible to move easily. Like I have to use the tractor to move Move it. And this year, my plan is to actually move the weird chickens more regularly, particularly around this area. You know, this part of the farm, which used to be just sort of free reign space for the ducks and geese and chickens to do their thing in the summer months, is actually going to be segregated from the old birds. Like they won't have access to it. And instead, what's going to happen is it's going to be for baby birds as they grow up and for them to like work in a nursery. And then I'm also going to start to do some more, I don't know, I'll call them permaculture style plantings around here as well. And so to have the weird chickens who are relatively low impact in terms of what they do to garden plants. Not no impact, but low impact. I think it would actually be a good space for them as well. And so that's actually the longer term plan for this area. And that's why I want that like easy to move lightweight coop 
like the weird chicken house now is. And in case you're wondering about dog configuration, as I've covered in other videos, Abby's gonna be working with the cattle and the chickens up on the top of the pasture. Toby Dog is gonna be here though, in this space still, mining this area. But given how just gosh darn gentle he is with all these birds, I feel really good about that plan. All right, it's now time to feed the pig slop. Today's piggy breakfast is gonna be a combination of spent brewer grains, some cracked corn, and a few eggs that were rejected when I was packing. Hey, you guys! <laughs> Hi, Phil, good to see ya. Hello, Artie, hello, little Polly. Oh yeah, you guys want the eggs, these are your favorite. Yes, the Piggly Wigglies, as my wife Allison likes to call them, are doing really good. They're still in this area, they'll still probably be in this area, I'm gonna guess for a month, because they're not doing nearly as much impact as I thought they would. They seem very happy. I can already see them growing. Like they're getting a lot bigger than they were when they first arrived here even, I don't know, three weeks ago, I guess it was. You can see they're starting to make an impact on some of the area around here. It's a lot less dense with brush. It's starting to turn things over. A lot of the small plants and weeds aren't growing. Which again is a good thing. They still haven't quite cleaned out as many of these canes as I'd wonder. Wondering the difference between say pigs and goats is part of what this experiment's all about. You can see like their little pig dozering happening through here. In certain areas though, they've definitely gone to town and you can just see a big difference. Like for example, this actually used to be a spot that we did, you know, some bonfires, you know, in summers past and they've like completely turned it over. I think they really like the charcoal for some reason. You can see like a burnt log that they pushed over there. A lot of this has been getting cleared out. You can see they're digging and burrowing through here in this wood pile, which I'll probably keep adding more wood to this over the course of the summer and then have a bonfire in the winter. Or at least when we get our first snow. This whole area here is like almost completely overturned. So they've been doing really good work. Like I can see the impact, but yeah, like I said, I'll probably give them another three, maybe four weeks in this area before I continue to move them further down that way. And I will say, I know a lot of people think that like, I just don't like the pigs now because of some of the comments I made in earlier videos. And honestly, I, I, they're, they're really growing on me. At first I wasn't loving it with the fence training. I don't know, just not feeling their vibe speaking to me nearly as much as other animals on the farm. But the more time I spend with them, the more I enjoy it. And so I don't know if I'd ever become a full-time hog farmer, but I am genuinely enjoying having these pigs on the farm. And it is exceptionally satisfying to watch them eat. It's just that they do it with such gusto and excitement and enthusiasm. It makes me very happy. It's very relaxing to watch the pigs eat out of the trough. And yeah, this trough is actually working out perfectly. You know, that was one of the leaky barrels that my last waterer is made out of. I'm still working on building a new, better waterer for them, but I'm exceptionally happy with my trough set up here. First, the one thing that happens is they get my clothes very dirty. <laughs> like I'm always finding I have to change my pants after farm chores because the pigs like to nuzzle up against my legs and spread all their slop all over me. It's, it's a little gross. <laughs> What's the matter, Phil? What's the matter? Yeah, don't try to eat my boot. That's exactly the behavior I was just describing for everybody at home. Please take a step back. Come on, Abby Dog, help me move your cows, huh? Yes, that's right. It's actually time to do the very first cattle pasture move of the year. For those of you guys tracking the days and continuity in our videos, today's video is actually being recorded 48 hours after I put out the video that I put out two videos ago. So the one about putting the cattle out into the grass. I know the timing probably is all funky and weird because what's happening is, you know, I made a video that took me like 30 days to record with hatching the goslings and so that happened in between, but yeah, it's been only 48 hours since the cattle first went out to pasture. As you can see, they've pretty much munched it down. Isn't that right, Ariel? Are you about ready for some fresh grass? And so what I'm gonna do right now is set up another grazing cell for them, for them to spend another 24 hours in. And then, you know, this is basically just what happens every single day on the farm from now until, I don't know, November at some point when I bring them in. The trick is just finding where it's not too swampy. I actually think I can get two days worth of grazing out of this area. It's always tough judging this time of year, like how much space to give them because of a lot of things, but mainly because of uh, like the grass growth is a little bit different than in other times of year. Toby Dog likes hanging out with the cattle too. Where'd Abby go? Hmm. Thought she was right behind me. All right, Ariel, Ann, can you go over there? I gotta cut this pasture off. That way, come on, Ariel, you too. Oh, you just want me to pat you on your rump. I can tell. Ariel, come on. Ariel is my friendliest and favorite cow. And uh, sometimes though, she can be a little stubborn. And that's what's going on right now because unlike the other cattle who I can just kind of walk right up to and shoo them away, Hey, Belinda, can you back up? Back up, please, back up. 
Ariel needs to make the decision on her own. Okay, the lane's clear for you, girl. Belinda, don't get any ideas. All right, let's see if we can use this as a tool mover. These fencing reels are maybe my favorite farm tool at this point. Can you go? There we go. That's what I want to see. That's the stuff. Yeah. Like, look how powerful that is. I have this whole idea for a video game based on being a farmer who just has a fencing reel. Yeah, I think someday it's going to be a pretty cool game. Of course, you can just add that to the list of never completed projects and ideas that I have in my brain. And I can just detach this rope here. The boys are crying off in the distance. They are a little bit jealous, but I'll probably take them out for a walk later today when the weather clears up. I have missed running these fence lines so much. It's easily in my top five things about farming that I love. While I hate building permanent perimeter fencing, even though it's oftentimes very necessary, I just love and can't get enough of putting out temporary fencing. It's, it's an activity I enjoy, which is a good thing because this time of year, it's an activity I do every single day. Now, given how long it took them to eat that grass over here and how much space they have this way, I'm gonna divide this paddock into two. So this will actually give me two days of grazing. And so to divide, I'll I'll just make this little cross fence here. For the longer runs, those bigger reels are nice. For the shorter runs, I actually prefer just using like cheap electrical spools that you can get like at the hardware store. So much easier and more effective to use for these short cross fences. All right, Abby Dog, we got our fence line set. You ready to move the cattle? Let's go. I think you girls know exactly what we're gonna be doing here. Hey, cows, come on, cows, fresh grass, come on. Hey, cows, come on, cows, fresh grass, come on. Hey, cows, fresh grass, come on, fresh grass, come on. Let's go. See, Audrey remembers the drill. They all remember what to do. Yeah, they love getting access to that fresh grass. And then as soon as they get into that new paddock, they just start eating away. What do you think? Is that a good move? Yeah, I thought so too. See how our weird chickens are settling in. You guys doing well? Yeah? Enjoying the new space and the new digs? I know you guys are probably dying for a little bit of a tour of this thing, so let me show you what we got. So what I like about this coop is that it is entirely plastic, which most people would say is a negative, but I see it as a positive because chicken coops are often the most frustrating and annoying things to clean. And so something like this, I can just, you know, pressure wash most of it clean. It's got a nesting box in here. So here's the nesting box. I can pop open this door if I want to get the eggs. I can also exclude their access by sliding that door open and shut at night. So that gives Rosie and Rosie's daughter plenty of space to lay some eggs. Got this nifty little handle for the door. It's latched shut and like a raccoon or a weasel couldn't try to slip their way through that. Flip the switch again, it's now open. And then this entire backside flips out. And so, yeah, you can see there's the nesting box side, there's the sleeping side. It's got this plastic graded floor that I can take in and out and easily just hose down whenever I need to. Also, there's like a little latch system so that this tray slides out so I can change the bedding really easy and just dump it out. Again, particularly if you're not doing large scale chicken keeping, which when I think about the number of little weird chickens I have, it's not large scale. Access to easy cleaning is maybe the best feature you can give to yourself for how you design it. And then this door can slip right back up. It was relatively easy to assemble this thing. It took me, I don't know, maybe a little over an hour to pull it all together. The directions weren't horrible. If you could do Ikea furniture, you can do this. It also is raised up in these skids, slide really easily. So if I wanted to slide it, the company also makes a wheel kit, which I think I might buy. They also make an automatic door kit, which I also might buy. And yes, if you guys are wondering, I bought this whole thing. I don't know. I'd seen people like do videos about this and the company even approached me about sponsoring videos in the past. But since I'd never tried it, I didn't really want to make a video about it. And so I just bought one and figured I'd test it out. If I like it, I might end up doing something with them. But for right now, this is just me experimenting, trying to find a better way to keep weird chickens. And so yeah, so far so good. Um, we'll see how they settle in over the next couple of weeks and who knows I might hate it in a couple of weeks But we have the weird chicken coop for weird chickens One thing I wanted to do because people are always sending me these and I just want to put the call out If you want to send me stickers I'd be happy to start billboarding the sides of the weird chicken house like this thing already looks kind of weird But I want to make it look as weird as possible And so I think a bunch of viewer stickers would be great uh, The PO box for our farm is right down below in the description of this video And if you send me a self-addressed stamped envelope 
with your sticker, I will send you back a sticker of my own. So it's like sticker trading. But yeah, I think that'd be fun. What do you think of this weird chicken house, Little Ginny? I know, it could probably also make for a pretty good cat house too. Like, I was actually thinking about it as I was putting this thing together. This would not be a bad insulated cat house if you were ever trying to think of a structure for an outdoor cat that's weatherproof. Uh, this would not be a bad option. Hey, get out of the chicken food. Not cool, girl, not cool.